Dark Shadows would have ended after the first week without Dan's story input. Uh, he simply jumped in and knew exactly what he wanted when he didn't know what he wanted, but which he told, which we were supposed to guess what he wanted, and come up with something that he liked, and then he would have other ideas. We had ideas that he loathed, would never do. Uh, I don't know where he had his genius for uh, horror but he had it. And one learned much more from him than we did from Lovecraft or any of the books that uh, he brought us to read. He also, at one point in the game, hired a speed reader to go through absolutely every horror dictionary that there was. And then he would throw a synopsis at, it, at us and say, no, I thought we could, might work this in according to, with these characters. Sometimes they worked, and when they didn't work, he would uh, be gracious and say, no, that didn't work, uh, you know. But it's his show. I, I, uh, I can only take uh, a certain amount of, uh, well, the writers could only take a certain amount of credit for it, really. But we all knew that at the time. And he was, uh, then, as I implied earlier, a rather fearsome character because he believed in his own thoughts so much. And I certainly didn't believe, you know, I never expected to write horror, and Gordon had never written horror before. And there never was anyone that uh, had that I know, no, there really wasn't. So, uh, he was uh, an incredible man to work for, and really inspiring man. And I came out of the thing, uh, the whole experience, feeling that I could write horror, which I've never tried to write again. <laughs> and I don't know why that is. The way that he managed to develop all of his talents through this one show was a very interesting thing to watch. And uh, he, uh, I really think, uh, can do almost anything that he wants to do. His children were important in the course of the show because the, I think his oldest daughter was something like 13. And uh, we would hear all of her comments about who was, I think the phrase was then, dorky, and uh, who was not, and who was cool, and who was not. And he paid attention to that, because that was our audience. Beside the appeal of the uh, vampire, which is ever-present, uh, in has been going on for centuries, it was we managed to hit in to the public, uh, the adolescent fantasies at the right time. But also that it was uh, such a romantic series that people, I mean, Barnabas never really got what he wanted. And he was always being thwarted. And the women in the audience always wanted him to win, but didn't want him to at the same time, because they knew he would turn someone into whatever girl he wanted into an absolutely hideous 
uh, creature. Now, perhaps 13-year-old girls want to become hideous creatures. I mean, I don't, I don't watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer or the one next to it, uh, the one about the vampire. So I don't know how they approach this whole problem. But uh, the girls, uh, the audience wanted the girls to go meet him at least and to take some sort of chance with him that would give them eternal bliss, supposedly, if, if uh, he bit uh, them. ABC had always thought of it as a cult show, and it broke so many rules of regular soap opera that they didn't think it would last as long as it did. So when finally they let Dan go with it for the four years, and then when they moved in and tried to, when it was the show was in trouble, and they moved in, it became even more disastrous than uh, it was. And I think Dan had had it by that time, and certainly we all, had, the writers, had had it, and only the uh, mad fans of Barnabas and the other characters. Uh, well, I, it has to appeal, obviously, it still is. We're, we're sitting here talking about it in a hotel that wasn't even built when uh, the show happened. So uh, I, it's worked out somehow for someone.